Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And I'm Jason Davis, a Distinguished Engineer with the DevNet and Developer Relations team. I lead technical strategy and special projects. Jason, it's really awesome to have you here, buddy. Um, we work together on a regular basis on a lot of different types of projects. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun to have you stop by for a conversation. Um, you are involved in far more than just some of the special projects you kind of alluded to when you introed. Um, for anyone who's attended here live or has been to a Cisco Live before, um, you probably don't know this, but Jason here designs and builds, in conjunction with some others, but designs and builds pretty much everything that runs the technology of Cisco Live. Um, and I, there's actually, as you call it, the mock knock cover over here on the floor where you can get a better sense of what's actually happening in the operations center that runs all of Cisco Live. And I thought it'd be really interesting for you to have a chance to talk a bit about this sort of like telemetry and data and observance that is going on of that data. Because for any network engineer, anybody in the business that we're in, having the knowledge to set up an infrastructure and connect things and get it running, that's fantastic and you need that. But then once it's operating, you need to know who's using it, how they're using it, so you can figure out trouble spots and problems. So how does observability and telemetry play a role in what you design here and the projects you, you work on? Sure, well, I tend to take a three-prong approach to how we monitor the event network. And I do both the US and the Europe Cisco Live events. And you know, it's not just a job, it's a wardrobe, right? So uh, I also get to be a speaker here at the event and share some of uh, what I do with Raspberry Pis and, and Meraki equipment and network management and operations. Well, telemetry is a very important part of it. And that three-prong approach starts with our commercial tools, right? So we're gonna use something like DNA Center to monitor the event. If we were doing something more service provider, that might be crosswork, right? Uh, there's InterSight, there's Umbrella, there's a lot of commercial tools from Cisco, and then a few other of our partner tools like NetApp brings our storage in, so we need ONTAP for managing the storage array, right? Uh, the second tier of that is using open source solutions. So where we already have the commercial tools doing things, sometimes we need to fill in with other open source solutions to get new insights out of the network. And then the third strategy is somewhat personalized type development. So writing Python scripts that will do my own NetConf remote procedure calls and streaming telemetry and then dumping that into something like a influx DB and then having Grafana show it. And these are all part of just having great observability about what's going on at the venue. You know, it's really interesting that you bring up, you know, not just the commercial tools that like Cisco provides or partners provide, but also the open source side. Um, and I think that's really important, especially here in the DevNet zone, when everyone's learning how to do automation, how to work with programmability tools, or more importantly, how to work with developer-centric tools, what we typically think is developer tools. Um, what, when you're approaching designing this environment for Cisco Live as an example, um, and we don't have to just stick with that example, but we're here, so let's, let's use it. When you're designing that out, where is the balance for you, or where's the sort of like, like deciding factor of like, here's where the commercial tool, you know, the extent of what it can do really should be used, and here's where we pick up with open source. Do you have sort of a, for yourself, that other network engineers would hear and go, okay, that's how I start to make decisions about where it makes sense to use which or the other? Right. Well, we always lead with the commercial tool because that's been developed by hundreds, possibly thousands of Cisco designers and engineers behind the scenes that have a really detailed understanding of that network domain or technology, right? It could be the Meraki guys with a really good domain experience with wireless or you know, the DNA center folks really having a strong understanding of enterprise networking. So we use that product and when we see there are gaps, then that's when we start to bring in the enterprise tools. And invariably what happens is some of the work that we do that is augmented by our developer relations experience and the whole DevNet program and the wonderful aspect of network programmability, mm -hmm. some of that information gets fed back into the commercial products. So a case in point is this year Wi-Fi 6E with the six gig band is predominant over in uh, the meeting village in Hall 7. So we were looking at the telemetry and instrumentation in the wireless LAN controller about what can we suss out of that device through NetConf and the Yang models defining the client statistics. And from there, we start to build our own 
kind of dashboards and insights, and then we share that with the, the rest of the commercial software development team and say, hey, maybe we want to render this information in a certain way that resonates with the customers mm -hmm. and allows them to differentiate their business, right? And I think that's the great thing about all of the telemetry and instrumentation in our products is you can get a lot of good stuff out of the commercial products, but if you want to do more, you need to plug in to the APIs mm -hmm. and telemetry and instrumentation we have. Yeah, I, 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 I can really appreciate, I'm sure customers can really appreciate this too, that the, um, the extent, extensibility of uh, much of the Cisco portfolio, as you just described it, mean, allow, means that through our APIs, you are able to say, the product is going to do everything I need it to do. Where's a place where I can extend that use case to other things I have by using just bring in some other tooling that can still pull the data out of the same thing you already have? Um, I'm kind of curious, you mentioned Meeting Hall 7, um, and for anyone not attending, that's just one of the other locations in this, in this facility. What, could you give us an example of maybe a use case or a situation that, that came about that you noticed by getting some of that data that came through that you were able to say, okay, this is something we really need to know about so we can make, maybe make a different decision about how wireless is, in, in, in the wireless case, how that is set up compared to maybe over here. Sure, so let's just tag on with that Wi-Fi 6 example again because Wi-Fi 6 was still being ratified three years ago when we had our last in-person event in uh, Cisco Live San Diego 2019. It was only in a whisper suite then, and there were only a handful of access points, and you had to have a specialized device to connect to that Wi-Fi 6 environment. Here we are three years later, and we actually have it in products, and people have it in their phones and tablets and, and laptops, and we actually see the next generation of that, which is again Wi-Fi 6E and the six gigahertz band. So being able to look at the telemetry, I found a new metric, which was Wi-Fi 6E capable, okay? And what that means is I've got a device that can connect to the latest standard, but operationally had to step back down because that infrastructure wasn't supporting it. So tracking this metric year over year will show us the adoption of people refreshing their phones and tablets to the newer technology and we will be able to use that information to tell a venue or a business hey most of your clients are ready to go on this latest technology but your environment isn't ready so if you want a better customer experience or user experience then you need to update or refresh your environment we're gonna have that information. It won't be an emotional decision. It'll be something based in data at that point. You know, that's, I think that's highly relevant for so many customers, um, as you're describing it, that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of businesses out there that need to make decisions like uh, about when to upgrade, when to refresh. Not all of them can, or, you know, it's not always the right time. But I think what's fascinating about that is it allows a business to say, what data, what understanding do we have of what people are doing so we can also get a better sense of what their interaction with the technology is to do their job. Because oftentimes what will happen is you'll notice that certain performance and product productivity levels come from your employees, depending on the industry that you're in. And you might be thinking, is there a way to have that be, uh, you know, be more productive or not based on whatever makes sense? And to know that, hey, sometimes maybe the technology is the thing that may actually be impeding some of that, that, uh, that quality of work that's really good to know, because then you can start to make the decision, is there a training thing here that we can work on? Or is this really, we need to upgrade our tech, plain and simple, upgrade our tech to help our people be able to do their jobs more effectively. And I think when you come through someplace like the DevNet Zone, or you interact with these sort of automation, what I think automation probably gets used a little too broadly in that case, because it's not just automating away simple things, it's also saying, where can I let a computer take data, take information, and put it all together in a repeatable way so that a human can look at it and make really good contextual-based decisions off of that data. Exactly. Uh, we know when you get into a car, there's a dashboard there that shows you how fast you've gone and what the RPM speeds are. Uh, how much gasoline you have in the car. They also have uh, little fault indicators like low tire pressure, check engine lights, things like that. Those dashboards are kind of like using a regular commercial management tool, right? Like DNA Center or SolarWinds or StatSeeker, mm -hmm. whatever is out there, right? We also know that underneath our steering wheel of our car, we've got an onboard diagnostics port, right? And plugging into that gives us a lot more telemetry and instrumentation about a vehicle. And your inspection station or your mechanic will plug in to find out a lot more about the health of that vehicle. 
in the same way our products, the routers, switches, access points, the servers, even the management tools and controllers have APIs that give a lot more detailed insight as to the health of the environment. So start with the commercial management tools, get the insights you need from those, but if you want to differentiate your business from your competition and get new insights and make things run faster and more automated, go after those APIs and, and use them mm -hmm. to differentiate your business. You know, and as we kind of wind down the conversation, uh, something that you just said there, and you use this analogy in conversations we've had before of the audit, the car <clears throat> and your instrument cluster and all the information you get there. I, I just, <clears throat> it just dawned on me how relevant that really is to a network engineer. I've had the conversation with people before where the comment is often, you know, I know you say the stuff is available in your APIs or in some, some cases in SDK, it's available there, but why can't you just make it available in the GUI or in the command line? And the way I've, I think this is a great way to explain it, the way that I've always thought about it is, the more things you put into a graphical interface, we'll use a GUI as a good example. The more things, features you put into a GUI, the more complex that GUI gets. And we have experienced at Cisco and other companies too, when you start to do that, that product becomes much, much harder to use, it gets bloated. And so I think the analogy of the car is a really good one. Do you really want more things on your dash that you have to look at? Or would you rather just be given just the facts, ma'am? Like just, the, just enough to operate your vehicle on a daily basis and something to tell you there's more here, take it to somebody to look at. And then that person can pull more of the detail out to really repair the vehicle. I think that's probably where people would opt to go rather than saying, no, no, I want all the information across my dashboard that I have to look at and I have to understand. People learn different ways. We are diverse people mm -hmm. and we appreciate information in different forms. And if you only settle on using tools as they're delivered, you may find out that the information doesn't re resonate very well with you. So that's why I believe also taking a strategy of using telemetry, instrumentation, and APIs allows us to render things in a way that really appeals to our decision makers that are controlling budget or the technical people that need to fix something or the non-technical people that need to understand new insights and communicate to others. Absolutely. Well, as we wrap up, is there anything you want to leave the audience with? Any places they should go to find more about the work that you do and any uh, anything to get themselves started? Well, obviously, uh, developer.cisco.com is the way to go for finding more information about our APIs and documentation and interacting with our wonderful team uh, with the blogs and videos. Uh, and we love to talk with you folks and share our experience and the experience that you have being shared with us helps us make better decisions and help others too. Excellent, thanks again for joining Jason. I really appreciate it. And speaking of, go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live for all the details about this event.